Warface is a class-based first-person shooter that's free to play on PC and has just recently come to the current generation of consoles. For a small price, you can get early access into the game, but in early October 2018, the game will be free on PS4 and Xbox One for those wishing not to spend money. But does the game hold up? Will it be worth your time to install and play? Let's talk about it. First of all, we're going to talk about the graphics and looks of the game. Warface looks decent for a modern game. While it's not brand new due to it being on PC for many years, the game looks good, not stellar, and you're not going to be blown away by how anything looks, but nothing is outright terrible. Some textures and models could use a bit of an update, but as previously stated, it's nothing that's going to be horrendous to look at. The game controls similar to how any other modern first-person shooter would play, much like Call of Duty or Battlefield. So you'll have no problems learning the ropes and how to control your character's movements. Your ability to slide, mantle objects, and run are limited due to the stamina bar. This is to ensure you can't sprint from one edge of the map to the other, in addition to the game that I have no personal gripes with. Your character controls respond fairly well, but the only problem I have with character movement is your speed. While walking forward and sprinting forward is no problem, if you attempt to strafe while running, or even just walking, you'll notice you move a significant amount slower. This is possibly to balance the game and encourage you confronting your enemies head on, and not to just rely on moving back and forth in a gunfight. But I think a slight speed increase all around the board, and especially for strafe speed in general, would be a welcome change. Much like Battlefield, in Warface you have different classes to choose from. A rifleman who uses assault rifles and LMGs and can resupply ammo to your team. A medic who uses shotguns and can revive and heal teammates. Engineer using SMGs and can resupply teammates armor. And finally, the sniper class who uses, well, you guessed it, a sniper. Weapons for classes can be unlocked via the character progression in the game or purchased from the shop. Some weapons can be purchased via Warface Dollars, which is the earned credits from normal gameplay. Some with crowns, which are given for completions of special objectives and co-op missions. And some via credits, the game's virtual currency. Think of it as COD points in Call of Duty. As a free-to-play game, there needs to be some form of monetization, and credits is how the devs seem to make money off of the game. Buying most weapons with anything other than credits will give you a timed variant of that weapon. While you'll only have access to this weapon for maybe a day or so. Some weapons can be permanently bought via the Warface dollars though, but not every single weapon. Credits will give you the most variety of what you can buy. These weapons for purchase seem to have just unique skill skins, but no extra benefit, so it doesn't seem to be a pay to win model. I personally won't be spending any of my real world money on credits in this game anytime soon. Most weapons in the game are pretty powerful though, and you will kill your enemies quickly. And having the ability to customize your weapons attachments mid game, whether it be sights, barrels, or grips, is something I really enjoy. The only balance issue I see is snipers appear to basically obliterate opponents with one shot almost anywhere on the body. But I've seen a response from the devs team on Reddit saying that they're going to look into balancing them in the future. However, there is no clear statistics in terms of players, KD, and whatnot proving that snipers are completely overpowered. That's a topic for another day, though. The game does have plenty of modes for you to play, from PvE to PvP. In PvE missions, you will play with up to 5 players and have various objectives to complete. From just traversing the level of killing enemies to escort missions and boss battles, the PvE in this game is very enjoyable and something that I find myself playing quite a bit. There's different difficulties to test yourself and having a balanced team where everyone has a role is a must in the harder difficulties. PvP offers the same options. Many game modes to play against other players and see who comes out on top. With modes like Team Deathmatch, Free For All, Kill Confirmed on Xbox, an Attack and Defend mode where the attacking team must try and capture points before time runs out, and many more, PvP offers something for everyone. If you want to jump in and just go for kills, then TDM's the game you're looking for. But if you're looking for a more team-focused strategy style mode, then Storm or Capture might be the game mode you prefer. 
I personally really enjoy the gameplay. While you have armor and health, sometimes you seem to die very quickly. The assist mechanic is something that I really enjoy as well. Being able to mantle certain objects with a teammate's help is something that I find to be fresh and interesting. It lets you get into some areas of the map that you couldn't just get to by yourself. But it's not always perfect. Sometimes your teammates will just walk right past you, so it might take you a few seconds to have someone actually assist you at jumps. I really loved this game on a 360, and I'm glad to see it coming to the current generation of consoles. I tried it on PC, but I'm pretty much just straight up trash with a mouse and keyboard, so I really didn't fare too well playing, but I enjoyed it on there as well. The main gripe I have, and something that needs to be fixed ASAP, is the servers. Sometimes just scrolling through the menu is extremely laggy, and in-game it seems the majority of players are not able to keep a steady connection that's good enough to play without some sort of lag. The team has acknowledged this and hopefully the servers and lag will be resolved soon, but as of right now, the server problems and connectivity issues are definitely the biggest problems with the game. Sometimes even the menus are hard to navigate and it might take a second for the game to actually respond to your selection. I've attempted to join many games of PvP and PvE only for it to boot me out to the main menu after attempting to load in. So hopefully the devs are fixing this as we speak and the game will be able to support itself very soon. All in all, I love this game. It's a ton of fun and I think most people will enjoy the gameplay. It's something familiar and something you can get the hang of pretty quick. But if the devs don't fix the servers and the lag issue soon, then I'm certain a lot of players will straight up not play just because it's kind of horrid at the moment. It's honestly sometimes not even playable on console. All in all, I think Warface is a great game with a lot of potential, problems that do need to be fixed. There's going to be a Battle Royale mode coming soon, and I see this shaping up to be a game that a ton of people play. Given, yes, it's been on PC for a while, but this is the first time it's coming to the current generation of consoles. Let's hope the devs listen to the community feedback and fix some of the problems soon so this game can live up to its potential. And that's going to about do it for my initial v review of Warface on console. I currently play on an Xbox One S, so all the problems that I've mentioned uh, are with my terms playing, but I've looked on the Reddit and PlayStation and other players are definitely having the same issues. Let me know what you think of this game down below in the comments. Will you be playing it once it's released for free, or are you going to skip out on this one? Let me know again down below what you think. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheerio, mates!